Hey everyone, it's AJ from Brow Quilt Expo, and today I'm going to talk to you about what a judge is looking for and how the judging process goes on at Brow Quilt Expo. Brow Quilt Expo um, hires a national accredited and certified quilt judge, kind of like a quilt geek. It's somebody who studies for years and goes through a lot of exams and tests at their own expense to get this certification. So they know quilt history, quilt blocks, new techniques. Many of them are quilters and teachers themselves. This is not somebody who, well, let's just say they know their stuff, okay? So what happens at BQE? Well, first of all, let's explain the difference between a juried quilt show and a judge quilt show. Quilt shows like Houston and QuiltCon, you have to be juried in meaning there's a selection committee that's gonna accept your quilt before it even gets to juries. I have the proud bragging rights of saying I have been um, not accepted to QuiltCon for every year that I've entered. One day I'll get in, but BQE, I always get in. So I always have that to fall back on. So our, um, our Quilt Expo accepts all quilts that are entered unless for some reason they violate a community guideline of ours. So you enter your quilt and what happens? So first of all, you can volunteer and be in that judging room, which is highly educational. You learn a lot. So we get about 200 quilts. So the judge only has about two or three minutes to review every quilt. It's quite a lot of work. I have been a scribe, meaning this form, and there's a sample of it on the website, has the categories. And as the judge is looking at the quilt, she's going through and I am checking off or putting in or writing the comments. And I'm going to give you examples of types of comments that I've heard over the years. The first thing is, is we make sure that every quilt that's entered in the category is correct. Sometimes you have somebody that enters something in modern and it's really a traditional or vice versa. And we want every quilt to have the best opportunity to win something. We award first, second, and third um, prizes as well as honorable mention. And we also have specialties such as best hand quilting, best machine quilting, best in show, things like that. The one thing when you volunteer to be in that room is your lips are sealed. You cannot disclose who won something. And if you see your friend's quilt or your quilt, you can't say anything. We really want to make sure that whatever happens in the judging room stays in that judging room until awards night. Okay, the first thing is, is let's say we have a stack of the first category. The judge is gonna go through each one. The volunteers are gonna hold up the quilt. So the first thing that she's looking for is design and general appearance. And depending on which applies, which is visual impact, overall effect, use of color, scale, proportion, balance, focal point, layout, set, border design, and quilting motifs. Quilting motifs is an area that a lot of times can make or break your quilt. So let's just go through some of them. So the first thing is visual impact. And sometimes the quilt, the, the judge will say, for example, like our use of color, um, uh, quilt could be enhanced with more use of um, complementary color. Or for example, um, overall quilt was very dark and could be enhanced by use of, of a, a a complimentary bright color, meaning that, you know, the quilt didn't have a lot of visual interest. And she's telling you that if you put in something a little brighter, it would have popped it and made it more exciting. Or for example, um, the, a lack of contrast in your in color selection resulted in quilt pattern not being so defined. So you kind of get where we're going with how they word things that are always to, so it's easier for you to understand of where you need to make improvements. Okay. Quilting motif tends to be an area where a quilt motif can make or break your quilt. Sometimes you have a modern quilt and a traditional quilt motif is on it. And the comment would be quilt motif distracted from overall design or positive quilt motif enhance the overall design. So really make sure, especially if you may send your quilt out to a long armor, coordinate with your long armor and listen to their advice. Don't let them do whatever they want. You know, be part of the design process. Or even for you, you may have to sketch out to make sure that your quilt motif and your thread selection is going to enhance your overall design. That's an area that can make or break a quilt. I know because it's happened to me. Okay, after that, they're holding up. 
They now go over to a table and they're put on a table. And this is where the judge looks at workmanship. Piecing, applique, other techniques, embellishment, and quilting execution. This is where your pressing also comes into effect. The judge is going to move her hand over the surface of your quilt and she's looking for no bumps or bulges. She's looking for making sure that maybe that your uh, points are matching, that your seams are nestled or nested. Did you press to the dark side? And, or you should have pressed to the dark side. Did you press open and your stitches were too loose, causing some of the batting to show through? This is areas that she's looking for all of these little things that you may not think about. She's also looking at quilting execution. When she rubs her hands over the quilting, she may scratch in an area to look at or test for quilting tension. Many times the quilting tension or your bobbin thread could be too tight or too loose irregular stitch length. Sometimes you're doing it on your domestic machine and you don't have a quilt re uh, stitch regulator and your, your stitching could be longer and shorter. She's looking for broken threads. She's looking to make sure that if you did bury your threads that the knots are not popping out. So that hand that she's moving over is checking to make sure She's really looking for that flatness. Like I said, unless you are doing trapunto or something specific, she's checking to make sure that your applique is executed well. And comments would be, for example, loose threads, broken threads, tight tension, um, or positive to say, you know, excellent execution of matching seams. So that is what she's looking for. Then she goes over to the finishing and that is edge appearance, edge finish technique, corners and back. So the judge is going to line up your quilt to the edge of the table and she's making sure that it isn't like weaving in and out, that you squared up that quilt. As she's doing that, she's touching the edges. Did you use a facing or a batting? And she's going to take that into account to say quilt would have looked better to have a facing or contrast color on your binding was distracting. I mean, there's a lot of things that go on, but the main thing that she's looking for is, do you have too much bulk in one area on your binding and not enough in another? That seems to be something that I've noticed over the years that judges pick up on. They want to make sure that there is even feel along that binding. And was it machine applied? Is the stitches showing? Or was it hand sewn on and your hand stitching is not consistent? Also, another thing that they look at is the corners. Are your corners nice and square and crisp? And in a traditional quilt binding, did you stitch down that opening? They all look to make sure that that little opening is stitched down. And then the backing, they're looking for same thing, no loose threads. They're making sure that the same thing on the front, that it's smooth, that there's no broken threads, hanging threads. Generally, that the overall appearance on the back and the, is just as good as on the front. But remember, this is all done in two to three minutes. And usually the comments usually get about four or five, and they could be, you know, outstanding use of color to, you know, consider adding in a different value for more uh, surface interest. There's a lot of comments, but they're all constructive. The judge does not sit there and go, I don't like purple, so I don't like this quilt. That does not happen. That would be unprofessional, and that's not constructive criticism. Now, as you can see, I'm sitting in my art studio as I'm not only a quilter, but I'm a painter. And in the painting world, we have what's called a crit or a critique, where a much more advanced artist is going to look over your work and give you constructive criticism so you can advance your painting practice. It's the same thing here. The judge is giving you constructive criticism because she wants to see you advance as a quilter and hopefully give you constructive criticism that she can award your quilt or your quilt at some point in time can win a ribbon or some rec or recognition. And of course, we also, she wants to award those who have done outstanding work and give them the recognition that they're due. So when do you get this piece of paper? When you come for your quilt pick up. This will be in a sealed envelope and it's only for your eyes to see. If you care to share it with a friend, that's up to you, but nobody sees it after the scribe. Click save, prints it out and puts it in the envelope and we got on to the next one. But consider volunteering if you really want to learn about what it's like to judge a quilt and what the judge sees. It is a very quick, intense 
process. It is very interesting. It is very educational, but please don't be afraid. The quilt judges are wonderful. And many times they hang around afterwards and you can ask them about quilting or their quilt experience or what they look for or what they like. They take out their personal biases when they look at the quilt and they really look at the workmanship of the quilt. They're not looking at if they like it or they don't like it. Now, of course, with that being said, I have been at juried events where you can start to see a theme, but at BQE, we like to consider that we're all fair and equal.